Okay, so next we'll talk about postpartum depression and pharmacotherapy, including antidepressants and a new treatment called brexanolone. So in general, antidepressants are thought to be efficacious for postpartum depression, as efficacious for postpartum depression is outside the postpartum when used for major depressive episodes. Because anxiety is often comorbid with postpartum depression, serotonergic antidepressants are usually the first-line treatments, including SSRI antidepressants. And SSRIs are among the best studied specifically for the treatment of postpartum depression, but also during breastfeeding. So the table that I include here includes some of the studies for postpartum depression, specifically treatment with antidepressants. And as you can see, that there are not a lot of controlled trials for this, yet we do not discount the efficacy of antidepressants in the treatment of postpartum depression because by definition, postpartum depression is the occurrence of a major depressive episode occurring in the postpartum and no reason to believe that antidepressants don't work well for that. So we would consider, especially if a woman has had a particularly good response in the past to an antidepressant, consider using that again so that she doesn't have to go through a long period of time before she experiences response to treatment. So just to mention, there also has been a new treatment for postpartum depression approved by the FDA. What's really remarkable is this is the first time the U.S. FDA has noted postpartum depression as an indication for the treatment of a new medication. And the new medication, which was approved in 2019, is brixanolone, which is a neurosteroid, allopregnanolone, which is used in an IV form to treat postpartum depression. So it needs to be delivered in an IV format in a hospital setting. And so there are some barriers to its treatment because women need to be in the hospital to receive it. So it's thought to work by modulating GABA receptors. Then also being a neurosteroid has potentially an impact on women who may have a hormonal component to postpartum depression. What's really novel about it is that it has a rapid onset of effect, and the studies showed effect specifically during the first day or two of treatment with durability out to 30 days of treatment. So it's not studied long-term, but really is an acute treatment for postpartum depression. So at this point, because it's recently approved, we have not yet seen how it'll be implemented in the community, but it is exciting because it's a first-in-class new antidepressant, and we will see other types of neurosteroid antidepressants follow along this course. So the key points really with antidepressants in terms of the treatment of postpartum depression is that although there have been a number of trials specifically of antidepressants for postpartum depression, we can really lean on all the trials of antidepressants for major depressive disorder. So especially if a woman has, has had a good response to an antidepressant in the past, that may indicate that that would be a good choice for her in the postpartum. Because anxiety is often comorbid, some of the serotonergic antidepressants may be the first choice for many women who have postpartum depression. And we also, for the first time, have a treatment that's specifically now approved for postpartum depression, which is brexanolone. 